I come over to them with my glass. Gudalin grabs me by the coat, sits me down at their table, and says, Sit down, Red. Sit down, servant of Satan. I love you. Let us weep over the sins of humanity. Weep in despair. Let us weep, I say. Swallow the tears of sin. Because the day is nigh, proclaims Gudalin, because the pale horse has been saddled and the rider has put a foot in the stirrup, and futile are the prayers of the worshippers of Satan, and only those who renounce him shall be saved. Thou of human flesh, whom Satan has seduced, who play with his toys and covet his treasures, I tell thee, thou art blind. Awake, fools, before it's too late. Stamp on the devil's baubles. Here he comes to an abrupt halt, as if forgetting what's next. Can I get a drink in this place? He asks in a different voice. Where am I? You know, Red, I got fired again. An agitator, they say. I was telling them, awake, you're blind plunging to the abyss and dragging other blind men behind you. They just laughed. So, I socked the boss in the face, and I left. Now they'll arrest me. And for what? Dick comes over and puts a bottle on the table. I'm paying today, I yell to Ernest. Dick looks sideways at me. It's all above board, I say. We'll be drinking my bonus. You went to the zone? Asks Dick. Did you bring anything out? A full empty, I say, for the altar to science, and pocketfuls of joy. Are you going to pour or not? An empty? Gudalin rumbles sadly. You risked your life for some empty? You're still alive, but you brought back another work of Satan into this world. And you just don't know, Red, how much sin and grief. Quiet, Gudalin, I tell him sternly. Eat, drink, and be merry, because I came back alive. A toast to success. That toast gets us going. Gudalin becomes completely depressed, sitting there sobbing, a liquid gushing from his eyes like water from a faucet. It's okay, I've seen him do this. It's one of his stages. Streaming tears and preaching that Satan put the zone there to tempt us, that you can't take anything out of it, and if you do, put it back and live your life as if the zone didn't exist. Leave Satan's work for Satan. I like him, Gudalin. I like eccentrics in general. When he has enough money, he buys swag from anyone, without haggling, and then sneaks into the zone at night and buries it there. Lord, is he bawling! Oh well, he'll cheer up yet. What's a full empty? asks Dick. I've heard of empties, but what's a full one? Never heard of it. I explain it to him. He nods, smacks his lips. Yeah, he says. That's interesting. That's something new. Who did you go with? The Russian guy? Yeah, I reply. I went with Kiro and Tender. You know, our lab assistant. He must have had your hands pretty full with them. Not at all. They both did pretty well. Especially Kiro. He's a born stalker, I say. If he had more experience, learned some proper patience, I'd go into the zone with him every day. And every night? He asks with a drunken laugh. Stop that, I say, enough of the jokes. I know, he says, enough of the jokes or I make it a punch in the face. Let's say you can take a couple swings at me sometime. Who's getting punched? Gudalin comes to life. Which one of you? We grab his arms, barely getting him into a seat. Dick sticks a cigarette in his teeth and lights it. We calm him down. Meanwhile, people keep coming in. There's no room left at the bar, and most tables are taken. Ernest has called up his girls, and they're running around, fetching drinks, beer for some, cocktails or vodka for others. Lately, I've been noticing a lot of new faces in town. Young punks with colorful scarves down to the floor. I mention this to Dick, and he nods. That's right, he says. They're starting a lot of construction. The Institute's putting up three new buildings, and they're also going to wall off the zone from the cemetery to the old ranch. The good times for stalkers are coming to an end. Like we stalkers ever had them, I say. At the same time, I think, what the hell is this? That means I won't be able to work on the side. Oh well, might be for the best. Less temptation. I'll go into the zone during the day like an honest man. The money isn't as good, of course, but it's much safer. There's the boots, the spec suits, and all that crap. And I won't give a damn about patrols. I can live on my salary and I'll drink my bonuses. Now I get really depressed. I'll have to count every cent again. This I can afford, this I can't. I'll have to pinch pennies for good as gifts. No more bars, only cheap movies. And everything's gray. All gray. Gray every day and every evening and every night. I sit there thinking this while Dick keeps buzzing in my ear. Last night I go to the hotel bar for a late night drink, and I see some new faces in there. I didn't like them from the start. One of them comes over and starts working up to something. Tells me he knows about me, who I am, and what I do, and hints that he'll pay good money for certain services. An informer? I say. 
I'm not too interested in all this. I've seen my share of informers and heard plenty of talk about services. No, my friend, not an informer. You listen. I talked to him for a bit, being careful, of course, playing the fool. He's interested in certain items from the zone, and these items are no joke. Trinkets like batteries, shriekers, and black sparks aren't for him, and he only hinted at what he does need. So what exactly does he need? I ask. Hell slime, if I understood correctly, Dick says, and gives me a strange look. Ah, so he needs hell slime, I say. Maybe he'd like a death lamp as well. I asked him about that too. Well, believe it or not, he does. Yeah, I say. Then he can go get them himself. It's easy as pie. We've basements full of hell slime. He can take a bucket and dip right in. It's his funeral. Dick stays silent, looks at me from beneath his brows, and doesn't even smile. What the hell, is he trying to hire me or something? And then it clicks. Wait, I say. Who could that have been? We aren't even allowed to study the hell slime at the Institute. Exactly, says Dick deliberately, keeping his eyes on me. It's research that might pose a danger to humanity. Now do you understand who that was? I don't understand a thing. An alien? I say. He bursts out laughing and pats me on the arm. Why don't we have a drink, you simple soul? Why don't we? I reply, although I feel mad. Screw this, enough of this simple soul business, bastards. Hey, Goodlin, I say. Wake up, let's have a drink. No, Goodlin's asleep. He's put his black face down on a black table and is asleep, arms hanging to the floor. Dick and I have a drink without Goodlin. All right. I say. I might be a simple or a complicated soul, but I'd report this guy. I have no love for the police, but I'd go and report him myself. Yeah, says Dick, and the police would ask you, why exactly did this fellow come to you with his offers, hmm? I shake his head. It doesn't matter. You fat pig, you've spent three years in town, but you haven't been in the zone, and you've only seen the Hell in movies. And if you saw it in real life, saw what it does to a man, you'd shit your pants right there. This is awful stuff, my friend, you shouldn't take it out of the zone. As you know, stalkers are crude men. They only care about the money. The more, the better. But even the light slug wouldn't go for this. The vulture burr bridge wouldn't do it. I can't even imagine who would want hell slime and what they'd want it for. Well, says Dick, that's all very admirable. But you see, I don't want to be found dead in bed one morning with a suicide note beside me. I'm not a stalker, but I'm also a crude and practical man. And I happen to like life. I've been alive for a while. I'm used to it. Here Ernest suddenly hollers from behind the bar. Mr. Noonan, phone for you. Damn it, says Dick viciously. It's probably the claims department again. They always track me down. Give me a minute, Red. He gets up and goes to the phone. I stay with Goodlin and the bottle, and since Goodlin is of no use, I get real chummy with the bottle. Damn that zone. There's no getting away from it. Wherever you go, whoever you talk to, it's always the zone, the zone, the zone. It's very nice for Kirill to argue that the zone will help bring about world peace and eternal sunshine. Kirill's a great guy. No one would call him dumb. In fact, he's as smart as they come. But he doesn't know shit about life. He can't even imagine the scum that gathers around the zone. Here, take a look. Somebody wants hell slime. No, Goodlin might be a drunk and a religious fanatic. But sometimes you think about it and you wonder, maybe we really should leave Satan's work for Satan. Hands off the shit. Here's some punk wearing a colorful scarf sits down in Dick's seat. Mr. Stewart? He asks. Yes, I say. My name's Creon, he says. I'm from Malta. Okay, I say, and how are things in Malta? Things in Malta are alright, but that's not why I'm here. Ernest referred me to you. Ah, I think. Ernest is a bastard after all. He's got no pity, none at all. Look at this kid. Dark-skinned, innocent, good-looking. He's probably never shaved and has never kissed a girl. But what's that to Ernie? He just wants to hurt us all into the zone. If one out of three returns with swag, that's a profit already. Well, and how's old Ernest doing? I ask. He turns around to look at the bar and says, As far as I can tell, he's doing pretty well. I'd trade with him. I wouldn't, I say. Want a drink? Thank you. I don't drink. How about a smoke? Sorry, I don't smoke either. God damn it, I say. Then what do you need money for? He reddens, stops smiling, and says softly, That's part of my own business, right, Mr. Short? Can't argue with that, I say, and pour myself a shot. By now my head is buzzing and my limbs feel pleasantly relaxed. The zone is completely let go. Right now I'm drunk, I say, celebrating as you see. Went into the zone, came back alive and with money. It's not often that you come back alive, and the money is real rare. So let's postpone this serious discussion. He jumps up, says he's sorry, and I see that Dick is back. 
He's standing next to his chair, and from his face I can tell that something happened. Well, I ask, are your containers leaking again? Yeah, he says, them again. He sits down, pours himself a drink, and tops mine off. And I see that this isn't about the claims department. To be honest, he doesn't give a damn about them. A real hard worker. Let's have a drink, Red, he says. And without waiting for me, he gulps down his drink and pours another. You know, he says, Kirill Panov died. <laughs>